Lesson 2.2 is about analyzing and writing conditional statements. So this is another lesson in our logic and reasoning unit. So it's not going to seem like math that you've done in the past, but it is going to have um, problem solving techniques and we're going to just have to remember how to use all of these new vocabulary terms. So before you get started, please make sure you have a pencil and you want to get started by filling in the vocabulary information here. So a conditional statement is a logical statement. Logical meaning that you're going to be using this to solve some kind of problem. Logical statement that has two parts. The two parts are a hypothesis and a conclusion. Now you should be familiar with these terms because you had a previous assignment that you find all of the terms for this particular chapter, which is chapter 2 in our textbook. So when a conditional statement is written in the if-then form, so it would say if this, comma, then that, the if part contains the hypothesis and the then part contains the conclusion. So you should be familiar with this form of a statement, if-then, and you will be learning today how to put the, a regular statement into an if-then statement. Then we have the word negation. So negation is just putting the word not in a statement, and that's so that we can make a statement that's the opposite of the original statement. So we're going to be using the word not, or inserting the word not, so that we can oppose the original statement. The next vocab word here is converse. To write the converse of a conditional statement, we're just going to switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So everything after the word if is the hypothesis, and everything after the then is the conclusion, and basically we're just going to switch those two things to write the converse. I know most of you are thinking converse like tennis shoes, but that is not what we mean in this particular instance. To write the inverse of a conditional statement, we need to negate both the hypothesis, which is the if part, and the conclusion. So negating, remember, just means that we're writing the word not in each part. So if this not, then that not. Okay, so we'll be practicing that as well. The other word that we want to remember here is contrapositive. To write the contrapositive, we are first going to write the converse, so that means we're going to switch. Okay, so switching, and then we're going to negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So contrapositive, we're doing both. We're negating and we're switching. Okay, the next thing that we want to realize then is that when two statements are both true or are both false, they are equivalent statements. Finally, oops, not finally, if two lines intersect to form a right angle, so if they form a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. And this is the symbol for perpendicular, an upside down T. So if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. And the last new vocabulary word that we have, a biconditional statement, is a statement that contains the phrase, if and only if. And there is a special abbreviation for that. If and only if is abbreviated capital I, capital F, capital F. Okay, for example number one, it asks us to rewrite four related conditional statements, and we're going to practice each of these types of conditional statements. We're going to make the original statement in the if-then form, then we're going to write the converse and the inverse and the contrapositive. So, the statement that we have here is basketball players are athletes. Now that's not in the if-then form, but we want to put it in the if-then form. The if part is going to be the hypothesis, and the then part is going to be the conclusion. So let's go ahead and write this statement, basketball players are athletes, in the if-then form. So if you are a basketball player, then you are an athlete. 
Okay, so again, we have to have the word if for the if-then form, and we have to have the word then. So the first part of the statement, if you are a basketball player, would be considered the hypothesis. The conclusion would be then you are an athlete. Okay, now we also have to say whether the statement is true or false. Well, if you're a basketball player, would you be considered an athlete? Absolutely. So that's true. So the next thing that we have to do here is write the converse statement. And when we write a converse, we just take the hypothesis and make it the conclusion and take the conclusion and make it the hypothesis. So we're going to switch the two of them. And when we do that, we will have if you are an athlete, because that was the conclusion, of the previous or original statement. If you are an athlete, then you are a basketball player. Now, is that true or false? If you're an athlete, do you have to be a basketball player? No. So the answer for that one is going to be false. Our next statement to write is the inverse and we want to negate the hypothesis and the conclusion of the if-then form. So we need to go back up to the if-then form and all we're going to do then is put the word not, remember the word negate means not. So if we read the if-then form it says if you are a basketball player and we have to put the word not in there at the appropriate place then you are an athlete. And we also have to put the word not in there because we have to negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. To negate the hypothesis, we're going to say if you are not a basketball player, then you are not an athlete. Okay, so notice that we have the word not. That means that we've negated the hypothesis and we've negated the conclusion. Now let's think about if that's a true statement or a false statement. If you're not a basketball player, can you still be an athlete? Well, of course, because basketball is not the only sport. So, this is false because you can still be an athlete without being a basketball player. You could be a runner, you could be a golfer, um, supposedly you can even be a NASCAR driver, and some people do, do consider NASCAR a sport. So, we're going to go on to contrapositive. In contrapositive writing, we have to switch and negate the hypothesis and the conclusion of the if-then form. So let's go back up to the if-then form and make sure we're looking at that statement. If you're a basketball player, then you are an athlete. So we have to switch both the hypothesis and conclusion. That's kind of like the converse. And the converse was, if you are an athlete, then you are a basketball player. And we also have to put the word not in that statement. So another way to look at this would be to negate the converse. Okay, the converse statement has already been switched. The if-then form got switched when we wrote the converse. Now we just have to negate the converse. So that's what I'm going to do now. So looking at the converse statement, if you are not an athlete, then you are not a basketball player. Okay, well, if we think about that, we already have the word not here, so that's one negation, and then we had another word not here, so we did negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion of our statement. But if you're not an athlete, then of course you are not a basketball player. So that is going to be a true statement. So each time you're writing a statement, you have to consider whether it's true or false. Okay, so make sure that you're doing that because that's part of the logic.
behind this lesson here. Please complete the on your own section uh, to practice. So you're practicing with this statement, all cats are mammals. And I do still have the hints for you under each of these different types. Remember that you have to have the word if to indicate the hypothesis, and then you also have to have the word then after the comma to show that you're beginning the conclusion of your statement. If you have questions, please ask those in class. Okay, on the back, I'm going to have you skip example two and the on your own practice for example two as well. So you don't have to do um, any of this. So just write the word skip there, please. As well as for the on your own part. So we're not going to be doing any of that as well. But we are going to be looking at the biconditional information in example number three. So, for example number three, write the definition of supplementary angles as a biconditional. So if you don't remember from the front of um, this paper where we have our vocabulary terms, the biconditional is only going to um, be written if the original if-then, so if the if-then statement and its converse, and its converse are true. Okay, so if once you switch the if and the then parts of the statement and make that converse, then you know that the, there can be a biconditional statement uh, written. So let's look at the definition of supplementary angles. The definition is if two angles are supplementary angles, that's the hypothesis, then the sum of their angles measures 180 degrees. Well, think about the converse of that statement. The converse of that statement would be if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees. Okay, so I took this and made it the hypothesis. So if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, then, now here's where I have to take my um, hypothesis and make it the conclusion, then the two angles are supplementary angles. Okay, so we know then that since the converse is a true statement, the converse is true, and the original if then was true, then we can write a biconditional statement. Now here's the biconditional statement right here. Two angles are supplementary angles if and only if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So notice what we do here is we just take the hypothesis, right, the hypothesis is the part with the if, we get rid of the if, okay, it says the sum of the two angles is 180, and I could fit right here, if and only if, then we get rid of the then, the two angles are supplementary angles. Remember from the definitions on the front, I told you that the capital I, capital F, capital F is the abbreviation for if and only if. Okay, so let's try example number five here, or the on your own practice number five. We'll do that together. So if you see, we have an if and we have a then. Well, let's read this first, please. If two angles are complementary angles, then the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. But if we rewrote that with a converse statement, we would say if the sum of two angles measure 90, then the two angles are complementary angles. So we have to rewrite this as a biconditional with the words if and only if. Since the original statement and the converse are both true, we can do that biconditional statement. So we do not need to write the if part, right? We just have to write the other, and we do not need to write the then part. So we'll just say two angles are complementary angles if and only if Again, we can just abbreviate the sum of their measures, oops, measures is 90 degrees. Okay, so you just want to make sure you have the if and only if in there and you get rid of the actual word if and the actual word then. So I need you to try this last one 
If a polygon is equilateral, then all of its sides are congruent. And again, if you have any questions about writing biconditionals or any of the um, converse, inverse, contrapositive, or writing an if-then statement, please make sure you ask when you get to class.